I just returned from Afghanistan because I'm also responsible as out of theater commander for the ISAF mission. And there we have, under the leadership of uh, my dearest friend, General Joe Dunford, a magnificent team that runs the operations. And I just will give you one example of success. Are we winning? With all my meetings with NATO, coalition, or senior Afghan uh, leadership, I had the clear impression that the Afghan security forces are making recognizable progress. They can protect their people already, and they improve on a daily basis. And most importantly, however, they are highly motivated and determined to succeed. And the recent polls in Afghanistan underlines that the population accepts this. They view the Afghan National Security Forces as their assurance, if you will. That is the message I want to pass. And sometimes you may appreciate that non-security related events impact a nation significantly. Last week, last Saturday, you may have heard the Afghan national football team won the South Asian Football Federation Cup, beating India 2-1 to one in the final. And the president immediately said, this is a holiday, celebratory fire. So it is a good, united people. That was the second message. Turning to Stratford's Jazz, the Supreme Allied Commander has already said uh, why we are doing this. Uh, my headquarters is, as we speak, running a battle staff training so that we train us in uh, TTPs, what we call techniques and procedures that we learn to cooperate amongst others. And you will not be surprised and you will appreciate that it is not only my headquarters, it is the whole circus team that supports this joint endeavor. People from maritime, from air, from land, special forces, CBRN, chemical biological radio uh, forces from France, uh, uh, joint logistic support groups from Italy, uh, and other entities participate. And how do we do this? We do this here in this headquarters, and we stay connected to all those entities outside through, in a civilian li uh, life, we would call it, to Skype. Uh, we call it VTC or so, something. So you press the button, and then I can speak to somebody in Italy contributing uh, to our common mission. That is fantastic. Um, this training sees my staff working 12 hours long day, long day shifts just to, to get a, put some stress on the staff, which also is I'm responsible for. So it is really stressing them and try to challenge them with the most difficult questions just for planning purposes. And honestly, uh, we are expensive. And this is taxpayers' money. And I think the taxpayer, as you are one of those, you expect that we bring some uh, meat to the table once NATO decides to call us. In particular, when the Supreme Allied Commander calls us, then we, we've got to be ready. The Steadfast Jazz series for NRF uh, starts in January, when I take uh, on command. Uh, and then we have to be ready for any crisis that is without scenario, that is the world keeps on turning and whatever NATO may then decide may be viewed as relevant to uh, or not relevant. So we watch it, we screen it, the Supreme Allied Commander will advise NATO headquarters and you know the procedures, NATO Council can only agree commonly. 28 say yes and then it's yes or they say no. Very digital, very easy for me as an operational commander. Uh, and that's why we are prepared, we are certified. Uh, in the end, I think you can say we will be ready, we will be uh, active, we will be agile, 
And this is of course an exciting time for a commander to keep this wonderful force together, multinational force, the Supreme Allied Commander mentioned already, some partners are in there, and keep this together to ensure, if you will, in the broader sense, peace and stability. Thank you very much indeed.